In today's tutorial, let's go over the basics of plan pooling and I'm going to take you through start to finish on what you need to know in order to do this really cool concept. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on planned pooling. Planned pooling is the example of variegated yarn that creates a plaid look or a tartan look on an example such as this. So on like a scarf. So this here on this example is Laura Jeans and she's my assistant and I'm going to talk to you about her particular example because you can see that her lines are not even and there's a reason for that. And this is my particular example and again my lines are not even as well because this is all very much reliant on you as a person. So it's just a matter of understanding this concept, how to get started and things that you need to look for when you're looking for yarn in order to do plan pooling. So let's go through these steps. So right off the bat let's get started and we're looking at the crisscrossing shapes just like you see in Laura Jean's example and this is mine here. So you're going to notice within her example here is that these shapes are different than these two here. So what's happened in her particular example, it took her, um, she was saying about nine tries and different sizes hooks in order to figure out plan pooling because she was relying on people to tell her the chain counts and so she kept changing her counts every time she was getting it. Plan pooling needs to be strategic. So here's one of my examples. Do you see any plan pooling going on there? No, because there is none. I started off wrong and then that means that it's never gonna work out for me. So when I see her example here, you see how it's a lot more tighter, these crisscrosses and these. My thing, thinking for this is that she relaxed and so once she calmed down, she got into it, then I would assume that any other types of this that she will do in the future will look more like this than it would look like this. So it's just a matter of understanding your tension. Now, there's online a petition against the yarn companies in order to uh, provide the plan pooling look on the yarn labels and the problem is is that the plan pooling is really on you as a person. So you. <laughs> so what happens is, is that you have to start off in a way that is reliant on your tension. My tension here on camera is going to be different than yours. So you cannot rely on me to tell you how many chains there is because the reality is, is that we all crochet slightly different. So I'm going to be showing you a way today in order for you to be able to do this on your own and what you need to look for in order to be successful right off the hop. So here are two examples of mine and this is about six tries later and this me is tr me trying to get the right chain counts. So I was going online and people are saying well you can chain 24, you can chain 28, sometimes 32, sometimes 36, sometimes 18. What is it? And the problem is, is that I couldn't figure it out because the reality is is that it's almost impossible to give that kind of advice for this stuff because variegated yarn in all the different brands and even brands with inside brands have a different length of colorway. So the problem is is that even if I chain 36 and it works for somebody online and I don't have this and I look at another Bernat Super Value, let me just reach in the background here, this one here will not work and the problem is is that the colors are changing too quickly versus this one here. So we have to look to the yarn strand in order to make it work. So let's look at some yarn strands and I'm going to show you what works and what doesn't. So here are some great examples of colorways that will work whether you're doing a dish rag like this or you're doing some value yarn or even Peyton's Canadiana but these are not just limited to these particular brands. So what we're looking for, let's put these out of the way and show you what you're looking for. So, so here are some yarns that work for pooling and what we're looking at primarily is the color way on how fast colors change. Now it looks better if the colors within each other are contrasting. So I did one in camel where it was dark green, light green and gray. Very difficult in order to see the crisscrossing shape happen. So you want it to be so some of the colors are really quite vibrant and others are more dull and subdued. But what you're looking for is that you're looking for a minimum length just like this. Okay and so this is a Bernat Super Value. So I can see the brown and I'm looking and I'm pulling on it and I can see the colors changing on its own. Okay, so there is one there and then it's going to more of a, a taupe kind of idea and then it's going to blue like this and then it's coming back to the brown that I started with. So you can see this is the color transition of this yarn. So this would work. It's got a long enough strands for you and it would have a really nice contrast of the brown and the blue here. So here's another one here, Bernat Super Value and again it comes to more of a, a sand color and it starts off kind of like a green so that's my repeat pattern and then all of a sudden here it's going to blue 
and then to another thing of sand but the reality on this particular one is that it goes green and then it goes to this burgundy and then green and then back to the sand just like we had started with in the very beginning. So this is a colorway that would work. It's got long enough transitions of colors just like this. So if the color transitions are way too short, so here's an example of one that's way too short. Okay, so this is Bernat's Super Value and look, see? You only just got a really short distance of colors and then it changes. These are way too short. It'll look like a hopped, a hot mess really. Um, you, you got a longer one there but then it goes kind of shorter again. So this kind of yarn is changing way too quickly and therefore it would not work. So when you're looking at the balls for example here, you see that it's got more of a color kind of like it looks more more like Walt Disney. It's kind of like very busy in color and this one you can see really the color waves are more steady and so when you're looking at this uh, when you compare each other that's what you're looking for in that but if all else fails just pull it out and you'll see how fast the colors are changing. So for the plan pooling concept these will not work for you. So these are called Bernat Super Value Stripes. Do you see on the example where the variegated stays a long time before it changes over? So you will notice here in the ball see how you see a lot of the same color and it looks like it's continuously wrapping and then it changes to something else. These are too long for colorways so that will not work. Simply soft stripes again the same thing you'll have you have very long colorways and it will not work. And then you have Simply Soft Ombre and Ombre same thing. The colorway is way too long and it will not work for this concept and unfortunately my friends Karen Cakes will not work as well because you can see clearly on the outside here that this pink stays a long 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 time before changing over and that's continuously happening throughout the ball. So you really are looking for variegated yarns that are really kind of quick to trans uh, transition but not too quick that it's gonna cause a mess on your pooling. Okay, so let's uh, begin now and I'm gonna show you how to create this particular example and I'm using the Simply Soft, the camo and I'm looking for the contrasting colors so I have the beautiful grays and the darks uh, to create the look. So what we have to do is that we have to determine the entire color sequence. So let's uh, just pull it out here. So I'm starting off with the burgundy here goes to black and then I keep going there's burgundy again but look there's gray on the other side so we keep on going until we see the colors repeating itself. So here we started off with burgundy went to black. Here's burgundy going back to black. So therefore I can tell you now that this is really kind of burgundy all the way to the to the black is my color sequence. So what I want to do is that using the recommended ball label on uh, and it was a five millimeter size H crochet hook today that was on the label is that I want to get pretty close to where the transition of colors are um, right here. It it doesn't matter if you're off in this particular um, pooling it just makes for a nicer look at the end but that's uh, completely up to you but that's not a deal breaker for when it comes to plan pooling. So what I'm just gonna do is just start it off here and what I want to do is that I want to uh, chain and how many chains is it gonna be? Well I can't tell you that because the reality is is that we're each different people. So what you have to do is that you have to chain and keep chaining until you see the sequence start to repeat itself. Okay, so this is a color sequence or I always call it a color way and I'm looking for the colors to repeat itself. Okay, and there comes some gray color in there so you can see it kind of just transi transitions to a slightly different color there. In between note that's not a big deal breaker that's just a transition of, of the dye. So I'm continuing to go all the way until I see the repeat of it coming. So if you looked at it here I started just right in the burgundy and then it went to black. And this chain is more of a builder than anything. It doesn't match your pooling at all and you're not gonna use the entire chain for when you do it. So what you wanna do is that you wanna continue to go and you wanna continue to go so that the last stitch then is the first color of the transition. So this one here is burgundy at this moment. So the next color if I do it will be black and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for that transition right in there to be my starting in order to go across this chain. So now we're gonna complete the moss stitch. So we're not only gonna go as far as this color transitions again. So I'm not gonna use the entire chain. This is just a, a foundation for you to get started. So there's really no secret answer on how many chains you need to do. So you're going to go moss stitch, so four chain from the hook. So one, two, three and four and going into the back hump of the stitch only you're gonna single crochet. 
So that space that you just created there by going to the fourth chain is the final stitch in the next row. Chain one, skip one chain and go to the next. And you're gonna continue to do this as long as this runs out. So you're looking for the black to be your fur, your color before you're um, stopping um, this row. So continuing to go along the chain. So make sure you chain one, skip one and single crochet into the next. So what happens with these particular colorways is that one row the moss stitch has the colors moving in one direction and the next row the colors are moving in the other direction which is creating that, that look of tartan or plaid whatever you wanna call it. So you're just gonna continue just to chain or a moss stitch across until you see that um, stitching coming back on the other side. So we're looking to matching what you see here. So that we're looking for the black. So what's gonna happen with the row, uh, the chains that are left over at the end? You're gonna undo that knot on the other side and just let it go. And that's not hard to do. We pretty much all do that in crochet when we chain up way too many. And then we wanna make it shorter. That's exactly what we just do. Is just undo it from the other side. And so it's a great way to do it, um, to do it this way. So therefore you don't have to um, keep fiddling around or trying to get your hook sizes correctly. You can just do it from that perspective. So black was our starting um, color on the other side. So what I need to do is that I need to watch for when this sequence um, stops. So I continue to go all the way to the end until I see the black appear on the top. So here right now you can see that it's, it's black, it's ready to go and we have black that starts us on the other side as well. So what I have to do is that I'm not ready to move up to the next row. I have to plan ahead. So this is called like plan pooling. So here is what we see as an example here. And so what I need to do in order to get the colors to shift over is that the rows have to be slightly off by one stitch. So what we have to do is that as soon as you see that black appear or the color that is on this side appear on your hook is that you have to pull it one just like that. Okay, so now you're ready to go. So if you leave it on and you have the black on this side like you did on the other side, what's gonna happen is the colors are gonna transition straight up and not pull properly. So you have to be ready for it in order to go. So let's uh, go to your next one. So in order to start plan pooling, uh, every other, every row now is that we chain up two. So we're gonna have um, one and two. I've already uh, have a chain in there so there's chaining a two. I come into the first space here and then I'm just going to single crochet, chain one and keep moving into the chain one spaces. So I'm doing the moss stitch across. So you're gonna say okay well it doesn't really make any sense because it doesn't match the gray that is underneath. And the reality is, is that the colors that appear in the pooling are every other row. So what I need to do is that I need to watch every other row and you'll see the pooling actually happening uh, pretty, pretty quickly actually. Um, and if you don't see it pooling right away then you know something is kind of off with your project. So um, it took me several times, uh, tries to get this in order to get it right and uh, you may not get it right the first time. But what I am looking for is that I'm looking for everything to kind of balance itself out. So because you're playing in the chain one spaces, your work has no choice but to shift. And so by doing this is that your work is always, always gonna shift in one direction or the other depending on where you are in the color scheme and where you are in the line. So if you remember the very final one, we went four chain from the hook. That is your final space, just single crochet. So we're gonna turn our work and you're not gonna see the pooling happening yet. Okay, you've only actually really got one row of each done and now you're gonna move on. So let's uh, chain up one or two. So always chaining a two coming into the uh, space right in the end and then chain one and moss over. And I can already see that the pooling is happening. How can I tell that already? Well look to the black and look two rows below. See in the black here was over one and now here it's shifted by one stitch. So I know the black is gonna go in this direction. So I'm gonna continue to go across and here is the burgundy and look two rows below. You see burgundy, it started one back and now it's here. So I can tell you right off the bat, Grout, this pooling is gonna work. 
Some people say you gotta go like several inches before you see the pooling work. Not really. If you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, I actually have an outtake already. What did I do with it? Um, let me just show you that. Oh I think I pulled it out already. Um, so I had an outtake on this uh, actually several times. And it's because I was just uh, tension wise I just wasn't right. So it's just a matter of finding your tension, getting relaxed. You know sometimes in the studio environment that I am right now I, I can be on the edge of my seat and my tension may be off. So sometimes it's just a matter of you just relaxing and just going with it and just really looking for the steps that you need to do. So remember at the very end okay chain one and then going into that chain two space right in the end to finish. So turning our work okay. So you can you see how the the red is shift or the burgundy is shifting and the black is shifting and these are kind of shifting in the other direction. So this is every other row so chain up two come right into the chain two space to right in the beginning and begin to moss over once again. So let's take a look at where the black is happening on this time and look at that I can already see it as well. Okay so you see the black here and it's shifting this direction. So that's uh, exactly what we're looking for with the plan pooling. So the length of your colorways and also the the concept of of uh, just making sure you start off properly has everything to do with the success rate of your plan pooling. And sometimes if the yarns are not contrasting hard enough um, it's kind of very difficult to see as well. But if you're into neutrals and stuff you can probably see it uh, without it being so obvious and then other colors are just so obvious it's just screaming. So don't forget to go into that chain two space right in the end and then start the next one. So chain up one and two going into the chain two space and begin to moss over again. So sometimes you gotta put a little bit of trust into the whole system in order to make this work but in actual fact it really works out kinda nice and it's really kinda neat once it gets going and you'll see it actually materializing right before your eyes and it'll probably make you pretty excited at the same time. So all I just need to do then is just continue to go back and forth on this concept to in order to get the crisscrossing shapes that I need in order to make this work. And uh, when colors are solid like this it just means that things are pulling together. It's usually right in the center point. So people say well how can you get that center to always be in center? Well be because the colors need to cross over each other when they shift it is automatically going to be appearing in the center. So there's actually no science uh, or brain power really involved in actually making that force to happen because it will happen naturally. So just continuing to continue to go. And uh, this is kind of a fun little concept. This is a pretty viral concept right now. So this really isn't um, like a stitching technique as per se. It's more of a concept that is really kind of neat to use variegated yarn. Uh, variegated yarn does some people it kind of pulls uh, really weird and then it kind of upsets somebody, uh, somebody. So if you plan ahead then you can actually work this out. So people say I would like to make a whole afghan do that crisscrossing shape. Well maybe there is a science to it but uh, not as far as I know uh, is that you have to really think about this ahead of time and get it to work. Now what happens if you run out of yarn and you're doing a scarf and etc etc. So what's gonna happen is that you need to cut the next yarn that you're gonna use the next ball to be at the exact same length of where you stop. So for example say I, I just ran out of yarn and I ran out of yarn here right at the black transition. I will start the next yarn right at the black transition so it keeps it in sequence. If you're off by uh, not even too much it's gonna be very obvious to you and then you're, you're gonna ruin your pooling at the same time. So you don't wanna to do that to yourself. So you can kinda see how things are coming together. You see that the, the, the burgundy is moving out. The, the gray is all pooling in. And if you look at the other example here you see the burgundy is moving out the, the grays. So eventually the burgundy is gonna move start moving back in and filling in. The grays are then gonna shift outward to the outside and then as the burgundies and the blacks move into the center. So it just naturally happens on its own. It's really quite a neat concept. So just to recap 
remember it's all about chaining and so at the very end you just have to undo this uh, this particular um, strand just uh, take your time doing it. it doesn't take any time at all and just undo that in order to get that out of your but this is a great way to do it instead of relying on chain counts which don't always work for many people because we're all different people and it would not be realistic for it to work for everybody anyway because we're we're all unique in our own way and we have our own artistry. So this is a really kind of a neat concept and this is quite viral right now. Try it, see if you like it and then post your photos on the crochetcrowd.com or sorry the crochet crowd Facebook and we would love to see your work. Till next time have a super day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.